It's time for the GZ Chop Shop Podcast. Each week, hosts Project Itachi and War Nurse bring you the latest in the gaming and tech industry. From the hottest releases to the juiciest scoops, while breaking down all the things you wish you knew. Now kick back, relax, and prepare to have your mind blown. The GZ Chop Shop starts right now. What I don't, is I don't, okay? Hold on. I don't feel like I. I don't feel like I have my mind blown every time. That's not to undersell us, okay? <laughs> I just want people to know that that we blow your minds unexpectedly. unexpectedly. That's the best kind. That's the that's the best way. Unexpectedly, we bring in all this shit, and then you're expecting regular shit, and then we blow your mind unexpectedly. Yeah, yeah. We don't we don't usually plan like, all right, well, how are we going to blow everybody's mind today? It just kind of happens, and then we blow our own minds when we find out that one of our random tangents wound up becoming reality, and we're like, oh shit, <laughs> that really, huh? <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, welcome back everybody to another week of the GZ Chop Shop. Yes. As always, we have an amazing episode lined up for all of you. Actually, this is probably going to be a a, a, a pretty a pretty in depth one because um, we're going to be talking about some game releases and the future of GameStop. But before we dive in and really get down into the nitty gritty of things and, and uh, bring you guys some some amazing topics, oh my uh, god, we get it. <laughs> the cheers we love. get it the cheers we go on it. man the cheers go on <laughs> we get hey, it. they get excited god damn <laughs> <laughs> the cheers keep they want us to know they love us um, they, they can chill out they <laughs> <laughs> but this week's episode is sponsored by our store the gzshop.com so if you are looking for high quality original themed items and apparel make sure to check out our store after the show and grab yourself something from our large expanding selection of men and women's apparel or you can select something from our expanding line of accessories like mugs pillows workout mats and more we are constantly updating our store with new items and themes so be sure to check it out and if you are signed up for our newsletter You can receive occasional discount codes as well. So make sure to visit our website, osn-media.com, sign up for the newsletter, net yourself some discount codes, and catch all of our podcasts all in one place. Uh, For anyone who doesn't know, we have two other podcasts as well, Gunpowder Red, which is our more grounded podcast, and After Dark, which is more of our, I guess you could say, silly, uh, going into game showy, chill back (laughs) <laughs> conversation because we don't really know we never really know what's going to going to be discussed on the show that's that's in the hands of Yuli. and if anybody knows how Yuli operates you can never predict what that man is going to bring to the table so it's like pandora's yeah, so box if, if 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 this podcast is like you're like this podcast is okay but there needs to be a, a little flair Yuli brings the flair. Yuli brings the flair. That's why he, that's why he's on uh, Gunpowder Red and and After Dark. He actually runs the After Dark, so that is totally almost out of my control. <laughs> so if you need that extra spice, go visit our website osn-media.com. Check out the After Dark podcast. Check out Gunpowder Red and uh, leave comments. Hit us up on Discord. Let us know if you like the show. Did you not like the show? Do it for this week's episode. Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? We, we, we want to know, we want to hear the feedback and we want to hear other sides of the conversation as well. Um, I, I do want to say we are not professionals in most of the fields we discuss. We do just like to bring our opinions to the table, look at things from a different perspective and provide you guys with the news. Most of the stuff that we uh, bring to the show, you guys can cite and we try to cite it, uh, put those links so you guys can do your own research as well. But it's basically to help save the trouble and instead of you guys just getting, hey, this new game is coming out. Uh, this is my favorite and why we like to just bring a whole new conversation to it. Like we like to get in depth, like what's happening behind the scenes of the gaming industry. And yeah. So without further ado, uh, let's let's get into it. And and we're going to kick things off with. Something we haven't done, surprisingly, and now that I think about it, we haven't done that. We, we're 101, we're over 100 episodes of the show. We've never actually had a list before 
of like upcoming game releases. We usually just like tackled the meat and potatoes of things like head on, but we never actually like looked at a list and was like, you know what? What's the list of things coming out? But because gaming has become such a mainstream media, it's literally it's outdoing movies and TV. It has become mainstream media that it seems like even now the triple a developers are getting a little bit lazy <laughs> and greedy a little bit is an understatement yeah i'm trying to cut them a little bit of slack just a little bit to the point where now i had to look and and it was actually you when you brought the list and i said let me look at this list let me look at what these developers are bringing us for the rest of this year is there any reason for me to get excited and i picked out of and this is not overstating this is literally a list of like 300 games starting from january to the end of the year and there's still a whole nother like hundred that are not they have no release dates yet um of the games coming out this year and i have to say out of that extensive list only eight caught my eye and only one of those eight isn't even because i want to play it but just because i want to point out where the game industry is going and why this is not a good thing. Um, so I'm going to read off my list of the games that I actually am interested in that actually uh, piqued my interest. And if anyone else is interested in these games, I got the dates for you. So here's my top picks. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 actually coming out at the end of this month, July 29th. I, I do like the Xenoblade Chronicles uh, series. Um, and I, I don't know... I, I, as far as I know, it's a true continuation from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Marvel Midnight Suns coming in October 7th is another big one. I saw that come across on Steam. And like right now, my only conundrum is do I get it on the Switch or do I get it on Steam? If I can actually get my hands on a Steam Deck, I will more than happily get it on Steam. If I cannot get my hands on my Steam Deck that I reserved a long behind time ago, um, I will probably get it on the Switch, but I am really looking forward to the Midnight Suns. It looks really, really good. Gotham Knights, October 25th, only because I'm big into my superheroes. I've seen some stuff about Gotham Knights. I cannot say I'm like overly excited about it, but it does look like it's worth giving a try. So Gotham Knights is also on my list. Star Ocean, The Divine Force, October 27th. Huge Star Ocean fan. I love Star Ocean. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. And of course, for all of the shooter lovers out there, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, October 28th. We already know that's probably going to be the number one sell in October. It's Call of Duty. This is like expected and everyone's been wanting the Modern Warfare to get redone after they did such an amazing job, which I have to give them kudos. They did an amazing job with Modern Warfare. So we're getting For the Modern most part. Warfare we're not, too. we're not going to get into the hacking, the, the hacking issues that they have. We're not going to talk about war zone. We're not going to talk about but that. the gameplay. The gameplay game yeah. is enjoyable. The game, the story is amazing. Um, and then November 9th is God of war, Ragnarok, thick Thor coming to your game consoles and PC. At, or I think it's thick just the Thor. game consoles right now. Thick Thor coming straight yeah, to you. It's not, it's not the Thor you're used to. <laughs> um, and then November 18th, another one that's probably actually my top two. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Oh, I look forward to that. That is going to be amazing. I love the direction they're going with it. Uh, Arceus is um, a very good example of, uh, you know, Pokemon being able to go in a different direction and still being good. If anything, the whole direction they took with that game, I was like, please stick with it. And it looks like they're sticking with it. And I'm like, absolutely. This is Pokemon right here. Next step, if VR. anything, if anything, Arceus was a uh, a little more uh, <laughs> manga manga accurate. Manga accurate with the Pokemon actually <laughs> uh, being able to attack you. <laughs> yeah, if, if you guys haven't read, uh, especially some of the more original uh, uh, mangas and light novels of Pokemon, I highly recommend it. Um, some of them are pretty dark. They're not they're not uh, quite as kid friendly, and they're very good. Yeah. Um. So I, I definitely recommend that. Yeah. Um. So definitely looking forward to that. So if anybody uh, wants to be my be my friend when the game comes out, hit us up on the Discord. I, I will happily become your Switch buddy and we can trade Pokemon. I will be getting Scarlet for anyone who's wondering. I will be getting Scarlet because, you know, 
it falls in the already color of red. It, you? you already pre-ordered it. Hey, look, when it comes to Pokemon, I have literally all of them. Um, I do not mess around, especially when they came out with the Pokemon Bank and the fact that the DS came out with the older versions and now you can transfer those Pokemon more easily. You, you have all the originals too? Yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. I had to. I wish re- I kept all my original shit. I didn't know any better. Exactly. And then I went in the military and then and then everything. I lost everything while I was gone. So. And and now that they have the the originals on the DS where you can download them, it makes transferring that hard work easier because back in the day, as they started evolving the Pokemon gameplay and how you transferred it, it became complicated. You need to like hook up your link cable to your your GameCube to tra- and it was it was really complex. Complicated was on the uh, the Game Boy Color when I had that giant magnifying glass that you could <laughs> attach to it. And then you could buy the little like light lamp to attach yep. to it so you could see better. Your mega and Game then, Boy. And then you could you could like hook each other's use like a little link, like a a, a wire, like a it's kind of like a kind of like a USB, but it, it it wasn't. Yeah. Up to each other to, to trade into battle, man. That was a hassle. Now I can just like link up to somebody, but yep. You can like link up Wi-Fi. to somebody you'll never even meet on the internet. Just go yeah, to like talk the Google. Shit. <laughs> like your mother hates you. <laughs> You suck. Oh, I'm man. toxic. The, the, the number one. I'm kidding. I don't, I don't do that. You suck. I don't do that. I don't do that. And finally on my list, uh, the Callisto Protocol, December 2nd. Oh, I'm so excited for that one. That looks so good. It, it, it's like it's it's filling in that gap that Dead Space fans have been yearning for after yep. three let them down. Dead Space. And you know won. what? It's it's. Really giving us a, uh, it's it's really letting us know the behind the scenes of PUBG, you know, because we we wondered how it all started, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I'm curious, like, how are they really connected? Like, how are they in the same universe? Like, is it going to be explained? That you know, how did you go from a how did you go from a first person shooter to Hundreds of years in the future, a horror game. <laughs> I want to know the connection. The lead up probably has to do with that game mode zombies, which for most people was just fun, but it fits the it fits their environment. And then maybe it stems from that. Like it started off as zombies. And then in the next hundred years, it went to where we're going to wind up. But the Callisto Protocol, it's going to scratch that sci fi horror it itch. looks so good guys if you have not seen the trailer for this game just youtube it. it the trailer is so good so december 2nd um it seems like a lot of the better game lineups are obviously coming out around the holiday times which is typical because that's when you know they want to uh they want to get your money get your get your money oddly enough december does not have a lot of releases and i wonder if that's by design maybe they just figure like nobody's buying anything by december like everything's already purchased Callisto protocol is the only one i recall seeing for a release in december so i'm guessing we won't see some of those uh non-dated games until 20 23 24 maybe um and it's funny that they're releasing Callisto protocol in december and not october but i guess i can see the methods of the madness because no matter what it's really hard to compete with call of duty like for any game, you you got well, not be a only that, but game. but Augu- but it, uh, when does Modern Warfare come out? The end of October, right? Yeah. Okay, so August fourth, Overwatch two drops finally. Like it finally drops for for the public, not just for beta users. So you're going to be competing with two esports games, two really popular games that say what you want about them. They're, they're popular. They're popular. Hate them or love them. They're 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 popular. They're fucking esports games now. Like they're competitive games. It's a smart move to give it a couple months to let that die down. Um, Cause p- those people that are into those games that month and through November, especially with the uh, Thanksgiving holiday, they're, they're going to be into those two games specifically. They're going to be all up in overwatch and call of duty Mo- modern warfare too. So it only makes sense strategically to put it out a couple months later, let everything die down. Um, a lot, of, if you didn't notice a lot of games had to do that with Elden ring and the ones that didn't, kind of suffered they they suffered uh, and and the thing is though i think a lot of people didn't expect elden ring to do as well as it did 
they were probably banking on the FromSoft community being just this niche community, but Elden Ring being one of the more accessible FromSoft games brought in a huge fan base and it just took off. And that's the thing with games. You never know what's going to be a hit and what's going to be a sleeper hit and what people think will be a hit winds up being a flop. Yeah, I think they were banking on just mainly the Souls players being into it, which yeah. does well on its own. And he, like just the Soul fan base alone does well enough to drive these games and even get them game of the year when they come out. But I, I think a lot of the reason that that so many more people this time jumped on Elden Ring versus uh, games over the past, you know, prior couple, two or three years. Um, honestly, I think it's that that explosion of gaming itself that we've seen over the past two and a half, three years because of the whole COVID thing. And, you know, we saw the uptick in, in streaming uh gaming uh only fans just yeah. all this internet all this stuff that you know the internet and streaming and apping that you do from home um because people were at home they were stuck at home and then we saw that explosion of uh of gaming so i think that's where a lot of that comes from yeah i'm you know i'm surprised one game you did not mention that i'm surprised which it's not a full game but Resident Evil Village DLC Winter's expansion on October 28th. I'm surprised you didn't mention that because you're a huge. I'm, like I'm a huge Resident Evil. I'm a huge Resident Evil I watched Evil you. Fan. I watched you platinum that game uh, <laughs> when you were streaming. I uh, yeah. Resident Evil Village is is one of my all time favorite Resident Evil games. I played that game forward, backwards, upside down, inside out. Um, the probably the only reason I didn't mention it is because right now guys sad sad story uh my ps4 is indisposed and resident evil village for me is on my ps4 and i've got to do a internal hard drive swipe um which i haven't gotten around to uh so i've tried to not focus on games that i can't also get on pc right now because lo and behold i've slowly been converting and i'm just wondering am i going to be willing to put myself through that again for resident evil uh just to be able to play the, L, the the DLC. I do like Resident Evil, and when the DLC comes out, I'm more than likely going to get it. Uh, but I was looking at it from, like, from the most standpoint, like a totally fresh experience of games. Um, which brings me to one that I had on my list, and literally I put in parentheses next to it, why is Spider-Man Remastered August 12th? Why? That game released in 2018. Why does it already need a remaster? Uh, I mean, you want to add that to the list of all the games that are being remastered? I mean, if, if, if you want to go there, that this is a whole other conversation when it comes to Ubisoft. If you want to you want to start that here. In a while. <laughs> oh, no. Ubisoft is uh... I, in, in terms of games getting remastered or kicked or the gaming industry itself just doing this shit and getting worse about it. it for a little for a little uh backstory on on the Ubisoft reference for anyone who doesn't know, uh Ubisoft has recently come out and and basically going to paraphrase here. Um they are getting rid of a lot of games on the digital libraries. Not just theirs, just across the board. They're getting rid of a lot of classic and not Steam, even that PlayStation, old Xbox, across the board. Across the board. They are removing the internet functionality and they are removing those titles. And it really sucks. And this was a conversation we were actually having offline about this completely solidifies and justifies our fear of gaming going digital. Because at a moment's notice, these developers can come out, they bring you a game. You pay full price for this game. And you could because you're under the impression you will own the game. Whatever they do with it elsewhere should not affect you because you paid for ownership of the game. As compared to someone who's doing like a subscription based thing, they know they're paying for temporary usage of the game. The point of the subscription was to be more accessible to your average gamer. They go to work, they come back, they hop into a game, they hop out and they play occasionally through the week. Where your hardcore gamers, we want to own our game because we know we will play that game. Even if we don't play it today, tomorrow, 
we're going to eventually play that game and we want to be able to just grab it and play it regardless we paid for the hardware we paid for the software we should be able to play that game well ubisoft has now decided to take that step forward and boldly say yeah um nah if we don't want to put money and i don't know how much it really costs they can make it sound like it's a ridiculous amount because nobody really knows how much it costs but to keep the servers running and all that they're like oh we can better spend that money elsewhere okay I call bullshit i call, I call bullshit not, not only because the gaming industry alone is worth approximately 115 billion dollars but because ubisoft as of right this moment as fucking google it 5.31 billion dollars and they're going to sit there and tell us that money can be better spent. How about you keep your games that we pay for full price available to us? Bare minimum, I can understand the server thing. I can. I can. I can understand the server thing. After a while, you want to shut the servers down. Um, but the only time that makes sense to me is if people aren't playing the games. What I'm seeing is because these games do not have any or very little microtransactions to mm -hmm. continue putting money into the gameplay to pay for the servers, they're pulling these games. And it's such a fucked up move. And that right there should piss off everybody. No, and that's a hundred percent what it is. Um, because there's there's like you said, there's no microtransaction capability. They can't milk more money out of it. So they want to get rid of it to force gamers to play the games that they can milk because it's like you buy that game, you own that game. They can't keep coming back to you and being like, Hey, new costume on a game that came out 10 years ago for $5. We're going to be like, uh, no. And they can't come out now and be like new DLC. Uh, should have came out six years ago. No. So they want to force us into this new era of, Hey, this game came out. We're going to milk this for the next 10 years. You technically can't own it, but you'll pay us full price and then pay us full price again over the next five or six years. By the time it's done. I mean, look at the phenomenon Fucking of Fortnite. No one owns yeah. Fortnite. You don't buy Fortnite. It's 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 free to play. And, but they've helped pave the way for these kind of games. Epic knew what they were doing when they created it. They said, hey, you don't pay us for it. Therefore, you know, you do not own our game, but you will pay us more than you would have spent to just buy the game from us over. I its wake lifetime. up to the morning that I get to send them another email. <laughs> just send Epic another nasty. <laughs> I, I've sent two emails to Epic pissed off. Both times I got all my money back, plus a free game. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, because the problem is with these that the. the the industry right now is we've accepted this stuff. We've rolled over. We've all just said, well, there's nothing we can do about it. This is how it is. And they know that. So they continue to do it. But yeah, basically Guys, Ubisoft is. There is something we can do about it. Not buy if, the if games. The gaming community. 100% don't buy their fucking games. You, if you think after this, I'm buying a Ubisoft game. Fuck that. You seriously think after this, I'm going to go buy another one of their games that they come out with at full price. No, I'm not. Why? Because in a few years, a few five, six, seven years, they're going to pull the game and I want to go back and play it, but I can't because they're going to pull it from the shelf and do what Skyrim did and go, you know what? Uh, how about, and you know, at least they kept Skyrim on the fucking, yeah. on, on the, on the digital library. They just remastered it. Like, yeah, we can make fun of that. Like they just remastered over and over and over and people buy the remastered, which by the way, I don't see a fucking difference between the original and the remastered versions. And like, not really, not enough for me to justify paying full price again, but I get it. People that might be new for Skyrim are like, yeah, I'll pay full price because I never play the game. Yeah, I get that. But if you think for a second, I want to pay full price for another Ubisoft game, get fucked because I'm not doing it. Yeah. The Ubi that Ubi shit pissed me off, dude. And it should, it should upset everybody. That loves Far Cry or Assassin's Creed. Yes, there were some shitty titles they came out with, but all around, ultimately, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed were decent games. They were fun. They were enjoyable, especially the originals. Yeah. And now they're just removing them. And, and it basically, even when you read the articles, it's just like, hey, you know, what, what money you spent, you're, you're shit out of luck. Like, that's it. It's gone. Because, you know, the least they could have done 
was just been forward and said, Hey, we're shutting the servers down. We no longer, you know, whatever feel like paying for them, uh, is in, in any value to us or however the fuck they want to phrase it. And at least let us buy the game itself because they're all single player games. You just have the option to play them online. At least give us that so that at least let us be able to do that. So if we own a game and we need to redownload it and we want to play the storyline again or fuck off and be like, oh, man, I haven't played that game in a few years. At least give us that because we paid for the damn game. Yeah. But, but no, they're going to remaster these games in a few years and try to sell them back to us at full price. Oh, and people 100%. are going to fucking do it. People are going to actually buy them. Yeah, 100%. That's exactly what they're going to do. They're just removing it so you no longer have access. So if you guys want those games, go download them right now. I know that they're trying to make single player not even accessible on some of, some of them. Like some games now, even for single player, you have to connect to the internet, which I've never understood. If I'm playing this game by myself offline why do i need to agree to have internet access or terms and conditions like i've never understood that but now i know it's a long read and a lot of us are in the tldr era but if you're playing a single player game and it's asking you to stay on the internet and it gives you a terms and conditions for a single player mode or single player game read the terms and conditions because that it's probably in there and they know none of us read it, myself included. They know we That's don't interesting. read it. That's interesting you say that because let's say I own these games and nowhere in there does it say anything about, you know, them being able to just take the game away and me being able to keep the game, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's actually the contrary. I, because I paid for it, I own the piece that I paid for. There's probably something in there somewhere that talks on that subject. Oh, I'm sure I would. I'm wondering if there's going to be any lawsuits coming out of anyone smart enough to read this stuff, find something and go for them legally. That's because the you own that game and I highly encourage everyone to do it. Hell, I might fucking do it. now. <laughs> Those are good games that they're pulling. Yeah. Yeah. The only, the only, thing i could see an issue with is maybe this could wind up in the same situation as like when you buy music because it seems like games want to go in the same direction music went you go to the store you buy the album you own the physical copy of the album but you don't own the music on the album that's owned by the music artists they're just sharing their work with you and you're paying them for their work so it's the same argument they could bring up with gaming you go to the store you bought the disc the case it came in is yours. The physical disc that came in, it's yours. The contents on said disc are not yours. You're paying for the rights to access said content. Now that is where you could probably have a lawsuit because now they're not holding up their end of the deal, granting you the access you paid for to said content. Which comes full circle back to why are you charging us full price for a game where we don't get a case we don't get the booklet that it comes with. We don't get any of the other shit that we used to get when we buy a game, all the physical stuff. Um, and now you get to just pull the game and we don't even get to play it anymore. I think they're trying to make paying for ownership less appealing and put everyone in a subscription based system because subscription based sounds more appealing because it fits the pocket. I get to play 30,000 games and I'm exaggerating here, but I get to play hundreds of games for just $10 a month. Where's that? Not the greatest selling point ever. You go to the store and you spend $60 and you get that one game true. But those 300 games that you pay $10 a month for, you either got to play them within that month or you're going to miss out and you got to wait for that game to come back in rotation or the amount, the amount of pirating that's about to go up by copying these games and redistributing them is well, going to be yeah. insane. We're going back to the early 2000s. I don't. And I, I, yeah, I can't wait because <laughs> I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Yeah. The, the, the forcing of the digital age is completely unnecessary. Like, is it convenient? Yes. I still believe gaming is in the best place it's ever been. And at the same time, the worst place it's ever been. Yeah. We're at a crossroads for sure. We're at a, yeah, we are at a crossroads, uh, but that could be a whole, whole conversation piece uh in and of itself but as not the meat and potatoes of this week's episode but as you guys can see just a little backstory there if you have ubisoft games or you they read you know deleted them because you 
finish them and then you might get that nostalgia itch and be like, oh, I want to play Assassin's Creed 3 again. Go re-download them right now because as soon as next month or September 1st, they're going to be gone. I think they said I think they said the end of August. The end of August. I think, I think that's what it said. So they're giving you like less than a month. And this article recently dropped. Like it wasn't like they just said, hey, by next year. They intentionally gave people a small window. Which tells you just how shady they're playing. Um, so yeah, go get your Ubisoft titles before they are gone. And keep your eye on Ubisoft because if they start this and no one complains, you can believe they're going to start doing this in the future. And not all those games are that dated. Some of them are still like in like the 2012s up. So go check that out. Now, for the actual meat and potatoes of this week's episode, GameStop making some uh some some big moves here. Are they good moves? I don't know. Who's to say? It's been a really tumultuous year and some change for them. Um, they're literally one of the last standing gaming retail stores. They're, they're hanging in they're, there. They're, they're, they're this generation's blockbuster. They're, is what yeah. I'm predicting. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of y'all are predicting quite honestly. It's a long time coming. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't remember his name off the top of my head. They're it's a Mike. We were having a whole conversation about a Mike. Mike, Mike Recuprio. Was the former CFO of GameStop, um, basically corporate fired. That's a new term I'm going to come up with. Corporate firing. <laughs> he was corporate fired. I don't. I didn't see any reasons why. <laughs> they try to make it sound like he was like, uh, like you fired him. You fired him. You fired him. Um, and his replacement was Diana. I want to say Jaja. I, I, if she ever listens to this podcast, I apologize for saying your last name wrong. Um, who was the company's chief accounting officer is now becoming the CFO. Um, and, and just something I want to touch on because I, I sent you an article earlier and it was talking about CEOs, male CEOs and female CEOs. And I noticed something with Activision and it raised my eyebrow at first, but I didn't think anything into it. And now GameStop's doing it and it raised my eyebrow again. I said, okay, there's some science to this. There's, there's something to this and it might seem like a stretch but i'm really curious so for anyone who knows activision i believe it was their ceo that they yeah corporate fired and that he was replaced by a female ceo and at most part you know people nod their head they go okay yeah where, where are you going with this and now gamestop who's been struggling because activision is on the road to repair now, GameStop, that has been struggling for, I want to say, what, almost two, three years since the big push of digital, even worse mm-hmm. since COVID, they've been struggling. They have let go of their CFO, who was only the CFO for about a year. He was not there long. They have let go of this CFO, and then they've brought in Diana. And I said, okay, this is the second time in the gaming industry they've let go of a uh, male leadership and they brought in a uh, female leadership. I said, there's something to this. There's some science here. I need to research this. So I, I did some off the book digging and I, I sent you an article and, and you said you've done some reading of the, on this of your own where yeah. uh, companies under female leadership, CEOs, et cetera, that they're at the head tend to do better and companies under male CEOs because they are more likely to listen to the market. They're more likely to nurture a healthy work environment. They're more likely to create more uh, better reward incentives for their work environment, which usually creates a positive workplace, positive reinforcement, and ideas are allowed to blossom so the companies thrive. And then and this is stuff you guys can look and, and research. I think 35% of corporate corporate uh, America now has a uh, female leadership. Now, granted, yeah, in, I, in terms of Fortune 500 companies, it's still predominantly male. It's only like 8.7% of a Fortune 500 are, are run by females. But in corporate, now it's about like general corporate, it's about 35%. So I said... 
I think GameStop took a page out of Activision's book. Because if you think about it, Activision has not been in the news as much as it was. Yeah, they 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 decided to stand in the corner and be in timeout. Yeah. As and, they should. <laughs> they need, and you know they what? They need to be in timeout. I think that has to do with the new leadership. It's being steered in a completely different direction. It's they're 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 fixing themselves. They're getting steered in a different direction. And I think GameStop is trying to take a page out of that book by changing the leadership altogether because now they wanted to ear to the market. What do people actually want? GameStop was afraid to embrace the digital age. Granted, in some terms, so were we. We know what GameStop was. We know what it was to us, the place it holds in our heart. But now we also know we, you know, we got to embrace this digital age. And it seems like they're kind of reluctantly accepting that because they're like, hey, we're trying to get in the NFT marketplace, which I'm wondering how that's going to work with a physical store or is GameStop going to become a completely digital experience like they've got collectors items and stuff but that i don't think that's enough to keep i i I think they're i think they're looking at what happened with blockbuster in regards to um uh, netflix and the rise of streaming platforms Mm -hmm. and even though that was about 12 yeah that was about 12 years ago because bank uh blockbusters went officially bankrupt in 2010 and then by two by 2013 there was one left and there still is just one left uh i i think they're looking at that and saying, okay, they didn't see this coming. They weren't doing this and that. They weren't looking at the market. They're looking at the market. GameStop's looking at the market and they're going, what changes can we make to adapt to this economy, this market, and the way people play games mm-hmm. and make changes that keep us relevant? 100%. And speaking of like making changes, the letter that came out to the employees. And I want to point out, this is how, you know, cor- corporate talk. And, and I, I, I know corporate's always going to be a part of every kind of business, but man, the, I hate how in integrated in gaming it is, even with stuff like GameStop. Cause I'm like, this really sucks. So there was a part of the letter that there, I'm not, I'm not going to read the full letter that was sent to employees, but the very first thing, imagine being an employee Working in corporate in GameStop, you're going to work, you're doing your thing, you're minding your business. And this email comes across. I feel like this is the part that stuck out to most employees. Um, So it starts off, it says, with that said, I'm getting in touch today to share three organizational updates. After making more than 600 corporate hires in 2021 and the first half of 2022, we have a stronger understanding of our transformation needs. Uh Uh-oh. This has positioned us to right size headcount across several corporate departments. Today, we're making a number of reductions to help us keep things simple and operate nimbly with the right talent in place. What a long-winded, politically correct way of saying, hey, some of y'all about to get fired. (laughs) And it's like, we're making a number of reductions. We're firing people is just a reduction to help them keep things simple. Oh, okay. I'm sorry that you uh, find the employees to not be uh, simple and operate nimbly with the right talent in place. You hired them. Now you're going to fire them for doing the job you hired them to do. Why? It's a desperation move. This whole thing's a desperation move. Now, g- granted, GameStop, as of right now, is still worth about, and you correct me on this, uh, but they're still worth about $13 billion. They're still relevant. They're still making money. They're still worth a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And they're not in severe debt. Things that you look at when you consider the possibility of, of a company going bankrupt and no longer becoming relevant in today's day and age. However, I do think that they're well aware of what's happening in the gaming industry. They are, they're, I would go as far as to call them the original backbone of the gaming industry. So I think they're trying to make drastic changes now to, get, to, to stay relevant and get ahead of the game before shit hits the fan and they, they just quickly sink. Yeah. I, I, Unfortunately, I, I don't agree with the way they're going about it, but I'm not in charge of GameStop. I don't know. I, I'm not there. I don't know what's going on behind their brains. Uh, is firing 
a large percentage of your corporate employees the best way to go about it and then hire on new people after you just fired a, a large amount of your staff. I don't know what that's going to do for morale. I don't know what that's going to do for your business. Maybe this is a good choice, but I do think this is a desperation move overall to make the changes necessary to try to stay ahead and stay relevant and keep making money and doing well in the gaming industry. And I know that they've they've been securing some partnerships and, and working with some developers and stuff. But in, in, in fairness to, to GameStop for them, they're basically a cornered animal right now. And they are clawing and biting to stay relevant. And it's not entirely their fault because this is where co- corporations like Sony and Microsoft have left them no choice in this matter. Because eventually with the 2020 was such a shakeup that it's ruined it's improved and ruined things especially in the digital age because now all the companies that were easily leaning on gamestop and third-party marketing realized wait we can just cut them out and make all that money for ourselves doing the exact same thing why send our stuff to them pay them a portion and we can just open up our own storefront. Everyone had to be digital anyway. No one was going to a brick and mortar. So why go through them? And that hurt them because there was nothing. They, they weren't ready for that. They didn't need to focus on digital. It wasn't, it, it, it wasn't a viable source for them. Then Sony and Microsoft come in and say, well, Hey, if you come directly to us, you get the same thing, which, by the way, I still don't think they should charge full price. I know I've seen both sides of this argument, but I'm like, it still makes no sense to me because, one, I don't own it and I don't get the physical stuff and you can take it away from me at any time. I don't think it should be a full price charge. But for the convenience, which is probably the justification, you just go straight to Sony, you get everything you want. Where does GameStop fit in there? It doesn't. Yep. And have you been in the GameStop Recently, I, I I don't know about your GameStop, but there's there's one here uh, where I live, and I, I go there probably once a month. Usually, I go and look at the new games and see if there's a game I want. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times I go there, it's because I know that if again, I don't know how y'all's are, but but my GameStop, there's three or four shelves full of games, like actual actual games, and then there's another one or two shelves of gaming supplies like controllers or cables or chargers, whatever, whatever it is you're looking for. And then of course the consoles are usually behind the desk or in the back. And then they have a cup, they have one of each kind of showcased the rest of the show. Like I would say the, 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 the rest of it, maybe I'd say 65, 70% of the actual store is merchandise. And it's appealing merchandise. It's like plush dolls, backpacks, uh, like stickers, st- cool, like a lot of it Collector gaming and anime items. theme. There's a lot of anime stuff in this GameStop. You can go in there and buy a pretty good quality uh, co- like statue collectibles of like Overwatch, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, like just all this different stuff like gaming and anime. So the marketing for them is like they're, they're a gaming they're they're a gaming company, but it's very obvious when I walk into a GameStop that they're trying to make up for lost income over the years with all this merchandise that they have that takes up most of the store now. I think what we have, what GameStop has here is is an opportunity, and hopefully under the new CFO and maybe if they can, can you know work with the CEO. What GameStop needs to do is uh, not not so much offer incentive. Well, I guess you could call it an incentive, but they need to appeal to the things people would want right now, not just in terms of physical merchandise, but I would say here's a good opportunity to revive something that we've wanted to come back for a while that died. And if they could do it correctly, could revive GameStop it wouldn't be the GameStop we know, but they wouldn't go under. They could become a fresh GameStop. And what I'm thinking here, and I want everyone who listens to this episode, coin the date. Because if GameStop does this, damn it, I want credit. <laughs> July 12th, 2022. 
Uh, for me, it's 6.02 p.m. For me, it is 7.02 p.m. This was spoken here. If GameStop does this, I want credit, damn it. Um, They could convert themselves into a literal gaming hub without changing their brand. GameStop does not mean and does not have to mean anymore going in, stopping to get your games. GameStop could mean, hey, you come in here because some GameStops have done it. And I heard that they do really well. You stop in here and you could do Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, yes. Pokemon. We had one. We had one in Arlington, Texas, when I was in high school. Uh, I think I told you they did Halo 2 competitions. They did Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon. And they had two separate areas. One was for gaming competitions. And another one uh, was for like, ta- like tabletop game, like car games, mm-hmm. like Magic the Gathering. Yeah. And they're small enough that they wouldn't be threatening Dave and Busters, but it would be more niche oriented. And if you make it accessible, the people will come because GameStop is still alive. They're not thriving, but they're trying to figure out where they belong. There's still the social interaction that people are trying to get back. You know, and it doesn't have to be like console gaming like you can do because there's people who are starving for like their card places. A lot of those places went out of business because of COVID. Yep. But GameStop is still there. They still have their buildings. Convert I was surprised them. the Warhammer store in town made it through. Made it through COVID. It, it's still alive and kicking. I was I drove by my, my gym got shut down, but they fucking made it. That just tells you the people are there. Yeah. You open the places for people to go without all these nerdy things that we all love, whether it's Warhammer, freaking Magic the Gathering, Pokemon tournaments, whatever it is, you give them a place to go. They'll go organize it efficiently. They will show up. They will pay the money. They will be there because then you you have your entry fees. People will still come in. They can still purchase the games off the shelves or even if, you know. The companies are like, oh, well, we don't want to do digital. Then host events sponsored by those companies say, okay, cool. You don't want to make physical copies of the game. Cool. Then how about you host events, partner with us, physical events. You provide the prize and we provide the 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 area and, and, or- and such. Even to add to that, if if I was a local owner of a GameStop, I would have done this a couple of years ago, okay? Uh, I say that, but let's forget about COVID for a second. <laughs> and I think that's kind <laughs> of like a few years ago. That puts you right in COVID. Yeah, but that I'm sure that fear of COVID and being shut down and lack of people is still in the back of everyone's mind. So it makes businesses like nervous to make these kind of moves. But if I owned a GameStop, I would want to open... Same thing you just said. I think those are great ideas. Um, but I would open up a little area for esports lovers, people who can come just like you can go to a sports bar and watch your favorite sports. You no longer have to go down to, you know, for, for me, it'd be like the Dallas esports stadium and watch a live esports event. You could come down to the local GameStop, be with your friends, have a few drinks and watch the live game right there on nice televisions at a little like a little just like a sports bar. Now, it sounds cool. It sounds cool in theory, but are we completely removing like game shop? Like, like GameStops aren't that big. <laughs> like, are we going to have to like make the GameStop bigger? Because you man, don't want it to invade. They're on, like, over here talking about cutting everybody and making changes and and all this all this bullshit language they have in here. Grow a sack of balls. Take a couple, two or three of your GameStops that you have in the country and, experiment. and do an experiment. And fucking watch, and I bet you it would work. I think honestly, give, I do think that g- would work. Give that fear of COVID a little bit of time to keep kind of going away, because we've all watched a lot of, especially local businesses, any business that has to do with gathering, right? We've watched a lot of places fall, uh, go out of business. But I do think, uh, COVID aside, scary viruses trying to kill us while we interact aside, I think it's a great idea, and they should experiment with this. I also think Hell, I, I go to a local arcade a couple times a month where they have a bar and I can play fucking classic video games. All like I just pay an entrance fee. They could do something like that. I do also think that GameStop would benefit from partnering. And now here's a big thing. Here's a big thing. Be for, GameStop. 
corporate Be GameStop <laughs> for corporate companies that always want to turn their nose up on the little guys. Partnering with small businesses could do so much good for them because those small businesses are going to they they try to appeal to us, the customers. Partnering, helping each other because those small businesses probably have a niche community. They would be willing to work with GameStop to bring that niche community to GameStop. GameStop, in turn, could help them out financially and help them grow. It wouldn't be a competition kind of thing. It would be kind of like working together. Hey, we've got a Magic of the Gathering group. You guys got a Magic of the Gathering group. How about we do a store versus with one of the prizes being something that we sponsor? Your store community against our store community. Now you've created a network. Now you've brought two completely different communities together. And this is a good promotional opportunity, a cross promotional opportunity that could keep them thriving because those people from neighborhood store A might say, hey, I saw this awesome Goku at GameStop. Let me go over to GameStop and grab it. Now they've gotten business and people from GameStop go, hey, that neighborhood store looks real cool. They had some cool people. I just kind of want to go in there and check it out. Boom. But big corporations don't want to do that. (laughs) It's all me, 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 me. So this is why they're struggling. This is this is why they're trying to freak out and they're like, all right, well, let's get into NFTs and 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 let's get on the blockchain. And I'm like, how many people honestly today understand how blockchains work? Not many. You know what? G- GameStop is a dude trying to do a good job on the first date and overthinking it. Yeah. That's what they're doing right now. They're overthinking it, man. Just just take a step back. <laughs> stop, stop freaking out for a second <laughs> and use your brains. Think about all the opportunities that are presented You're, right now. Right now, they're the stop part. They're not the game part. Yeah, they're yeah, they're <laughs> I need full. You guys, stop. a game stops. Stop the stopping. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, they 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 are holding themselves back. They have become their own worst enemy. The refusal to accept the things are changing, um, and then the unwillingness to not just appeal. They're now they're accepting it, but now they're trying to appeal just to it. It's like, no, you're going to cut off the people that made you who you are. You're cutting them off. Not everyone wants to get an NFTs yet. Not everybody's ready. Not everybody understands it. Not everybody wants to have to learn blockchain. You're forcing people to interact with you on a level that they're not ready for. And most of the people that get it understand they're not going to pay money to you yet. Half of them probably don't even have a job where they can split that kind of money and and be willing to invest in that. So you have to find a healthy balance, especially as a brick and mortar. And I think that's a prime opportunity because their name and their brand covers so much. It covers so much. And if you really want to sock it to them fun at GameStop sometimes, and and we we you know we kind of poke fun at like their their choices and stuff, but we all love GameStop. Not just us. Like all of you guys love GameStop. Like GameStop is so well known. And I will again argue any day of the week that they're they they were they they are no longer. I I would not any longer call them the backbone of the gaming industry. I unfortunately I wouldn't call them that. But they made the gaming industry what it is today. Without a GameStop. Do you do do we all really think gaming would be what it is today? Absolutely without not. Without a GameStop, it wouldn't. Absolutely not. And if it wasn't for COVID, <clears throat> GameStop would not have hit the problems it hit. Literally, the <laughs> whoever, however, wherever COVID came from, whether COVID itself is a sentient being that just was like, let's fast forward humanity into the digital age. <laughs> I, I still stand by my theory that earth is just a rescue park, like a rescue zoo. And that that's where all the animals and people were put. And we think we're looking at the universe, but it's really like a weird mirror. It's a mirror. And the aliens are the Rangers and they're just checking on us. And they just, you know, and one I of them sneezed on us and then we got, COVID. they're like, yeah, one of them sneezed like shit. And they're like, we told you not to come to work sick. <laughs> God damn it. We're not the humans. You get paid leave. You're not going to get written up. <laughs> like, oh man. But, um, but yeah, honestly, that's, that's the state that GameStop is in. Um, 
I do think they have a lot of opportunities. I strongly, strongly believe if they worked with similar small companies, it could do a lot to revive because then they would connect with their consumers on a more intimate level. And that's where the funding could come from because then it's like you go to your GameStop, you're not just paying a corporate business. You're, 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 you're going to your neighborhood GameStop. Like I would love to be able to say, Hey, I'm going to go to GameStop, do some Yu-Gi-Oh. That would be awesome. That would be oh, amazing. And then turn around and buy a game off the shelf. Like that's what I do when I go to my hobby shop. I go, I, you know, I watch them play Yu-Gi-Oh and then I grab a comic book. I always get something when I go because of the environment that they created for me to enjoy. And you know what? A lot of people think, oh, no one plays that. Every time I go and I had Tuesdays and Saturday nights, religiously, they have their Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, right? They are packed all the time. And a lot of people think, oh, they must be kids. No, they are our peers. They are people in their 30s and younger. I still still have two Yu-Gi-Oh decks from the original series when I was in uh, high school. And I know uh, a large handful of people that actively play Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and, and you know, is Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering? Of course, it's a fucking different game, people. Like, stop gatekeeping. Stop hating. I love Magic the Gathering. A couple of my best friends, are uh, they, they love both. Like, they're both very enjoyable. I do think Magic the Gathering is much more intricate. It is. And, and much more strategic. <clears throat> But Yu-Gi-Oh itself, even though it has changed, like I wouldn't be able to play a tournament now. Like I would get distracted. I wouldn't know what the fuck I'm doing. The rules have changed. Like a lot of things have changed. Yeah, well, they're but the game is five now. fun. And if it wasn't fun, if people didn't enjoy it, there wouldn't be so many people playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Now they wouldn't I, be selling cards. I will say something in terms of intricacy, like how the game works for Magic. I will say it seems more intricate on the surface because you can't just pick it up and play. Now, if we're talking Yu-Gi-Oh! back from like the early 2000s, Magic was far more intricate. I will argue as a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan that I think now Yu-Gi-Oh! is on that same level of depth. It just seems to most people more kiddish because it had an anime and it came on for kids TV. But the storyline, just like Pokemon in the manga, was a lot deeper, a lot darker. A lot of people like, oh, but they had this thing called the Shadow. No, the Shadow Realm was hell. When you went to, you died. Like Yu-Gi-Oh dealt with death, it dealt with hell, it dealt with dark storylines. And a lot of people don't know that. And since Magic the Gathering doesn't have that kind of counterpart to the most people, it seems like Magic the Gathering is, you know, more mature. But Yu-Gi-Oh actually has mature and the cards themselves have actual story arcs where it's like when you actually look at the, the lore of the cards and stuff, it's amazing. But just to prove how deep Yu-Gi-Oh is, English, well, punctuation on those cards are critical because the difference can be something as similar as as a comma, a semicolon, or period changes the entire way a card is played. Yep. And and I, I remember, I remember in Yu Gi Oh, like this. This is how long it's been since I've I've played an actual Yu Gi Oh comp. Like I didn't go to competitions, but I played with people. Like I, I knew how to play. Um, and and some of them I get like some of them did competitions and stuff, but I never did. Um. The last time I actively played Yu-Gi-Oh with my decks was when Blue Eyes Ultimate White Dragon was still considered one of the best cards. <laughs> I have, I don't know if they're worth anything. They probably aren't. I don't know. Yu-Gi-Oh hasn't been around as long as Magic has. But I, I have three original Blue Eyes and one original Blue Eyes. Like we're talking first year. Like they're in decent condition. The the, the there's no tears on them or anything. They're in cases. Uh, I'm curious. I've never looked it up, but when did when I, did I magic those cards? You you made me curious about it. When did magic come out? Uh, I think the 80s. Let's, let's look it up. Let's look it up. Let's I know Magic the Gathering is 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 old. It's like I want to say Dungeons and Dragons old. Uh, 1993. I was close. Okay, so it's not that much older than Yu Gi Oh. Actually, Yu Gi Oh actually dates uh, back it's to. About- uh yeah maybe a, f- a few years yeah it's like three years older because if you look at your Yu-Gi-Oh cards and you look at the bottom which also by the way uh sad sad story uh kazuki takahashi's passing within this last week he was the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, passed away at 60 created a 
created the phenomenon that we're discussing right now. Um, so if you have any of the, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards with his print, keep them. Keep those cards. Um, but yeah, if you looked at the bottom of the cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh, we didn't get it till like the late 90s, early 2000s. But his copyright on it is 1996 because the original Yu-Gi-Oh series that he started, Yu-Gi-Oh Zero, we didn't see that until much later. And that was after we got Yu-Gi-Oh! But there was actually the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zero series, which was a little bit more mature and completely different character designs that than what we eventually got. So I'm, I'm just bringing this up because when I, when I looked up, like, when did Magic the Gathering officially start? You know how you get pe- people also ask? So the first one's a, a legitimate question, and I just find curious. Uh, how many Magic the Gathering cards exist? 49,998 totally unique English language magic cards Holy exist. Crap. If you add in all the variants, there are about seven, about, there's not even a number, about 78,120, uh, sorry, 78,122 total unique in-game cards. That's, holy shit. That's that's a lot of cards. That far exceeds Bro, the amount of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The, the, second, the second question I see on here is Magic the Gathering harder than chess? First of all, I want to know what somebody was going through in life to go, is Magic the Gathering harder than chess? Like, were they playing chess? And they're also into magic and they're like, chess is just too easy. And they got in an argument and someone's like, uh, magic the gathering is stupid. It's not that hard. Uh, this is hard. And they fucking looked it up and got a poll going. I don't know. But this is what it says. While chess algorithms can handily defeat the best human players in the world, we are still very, very far from actually solving chess. It's been found to have non-trivial complexities Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering has been found to have non-trivial complexity, including dots and boxes, Jenga and Tetris. Hence, Magic the Gathering, as it turns out, is scientifically and mathematically more complex than all of them. I could believe that. I could could believe that. Because it's it's a a constantly evolving game. Right, exactly. I mean, Chet... Chess is strategy by all means. And I'm people, I am not a pro chess player. Okay. I'm not, but from what I see, chess is, is, is strategy. It's mostly tr- strategy and you only have so many pieces to work with. And they're the same pieces. Every game, the, the pieces don't change with magic. The gathering, there's the combinations of 78,120. I keep trying to say 2022, uh, 78,120. <laughs> totally unique in-game cards we're just gonna that's skip a it. lot more than a, a few pieces we're just skip the fucking number i'm just fucking done i'm done y'all get my point <laughs> so so in a nutshell uh because we went down that rabbit hole um gamestop add magic the gathering and you give tournaments to your store and you might solve all your problems <laughs> so so yeah um but yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Uh, and yeah, those those are the main topics. So we would love to hear your guys' feedback on that. Do you think GameStop is on it in its last legs? Do you think that they have some other way to recover? Um, what would you suggest for them to recuperate? Uh, does anyone know how to help Warner say his numbers? Please let us know. <laughs> Leave a message with the. I'm not good with numbers. I'm not good with numbers. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, but before we wrap up this uh this week's episode i want and i think we're gonna make this a thing going forward we we always talk about the games we always talk about the news and stuff and we've always talked about we need to add in our tv shows and animes so in light of that the end of each episode and and everyone who listens please comment even if you just leave the name and we're always looking for new shows to watch we are always looking for new shows to watch and if you're on our discord we suggest tons of anime constantly if you just go to our anime channel and scroll up there is a plethora of anime for you guys so each week we are going to give our recommendation of our favorite show or favorite anime or if we got one of each um we're gonna leave that recommendation and and a little bit of of why and to kick things off i will start 
And my show recommendation, which I think everyone on the face of this planet has been watching, and if you haven't been watching, you've been doing yourself a huge disservice, is The Boys. And man, did season three deliver. And if anyone who does not know what The Boys is, it is... It is not. I won't say a parody. It is. It's a good show in its own right. Oh, it's, but it, it's satire. For it's sure. it's satire. We're making fun of our country. Uh, it, it's it, it. And man, they do not pull their punches, but they go about it in a way where honestly, they address the issues that most of us do try to glaze over, and they call it out. And they also show. Let's be honest. If we had superheroes for real, this is what it would be like. That's exactly what it would be like. And they nail it so well. It is such a good show. Now, I did not read the core material. Burn, if you're listening to this, please don't punch me. As anyone knows, Burn is our resident gaming comic guru. Um, he's usually read the source material of anything that has a movie or TV he can, show. He can tell you the issue date, the number, the page number, the year <laughs> it came out. Dude, I'm telling you, like, it's insane. We'll have him on the show hopefully again soon. Yeah, he, he's our resident guru with that stuff. Um but the the TV show, while it has in even I know in some big ways deviated from the core material, is such a good, good show. It's like I am so upset that season three, it's like we wait forever for the seasons and then they're over that fast. And you don't even realize they like six weeks have passed. And you're like, what? That's it. I need more. Um, it's such it's such a good show. And anything that has Carl Urban. Usually is good. The man is a yeah. true sci-fi comic lover. Like he's a damn good actor. He's too. such a good actor. And and when I saw he was in, I was like, I gotta watch it just because Carl Urban is in it. And it's and he's done such a good job with that show. Um, and now in terms of anime, well, that that list would be extensive. Um, which is funny because I actually was watching something new um last night i can't i can't remember the name off the top of my head if i can find it well in my crunchy roll um i'll mention it but there is a show called licorice recoil it is new it started this month and i it, it came up on my recommend it and honestly i gotta say crunchy roll has pretty much learned my taste pretty well i gotta say whatever algorithm they have based off of anime um is pretty good like usually when i don't have anything to watch i'll click on the, one of their recommendations and i'm like all right i'll give this a try and it's usually been pretty good i'm like all right crunchy roll you kind of know me all right i'll give you i'll give you that um licorice recoil is such a good anime and it's 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 only like two episodes in but it's basically about this uh we'll say modern day japan being protected by hitmen like hitmen girls like you try to commit a crime and they're like already on you and they're putting you down and like japan is thriving in this like crime free environment all thanks to these girls that are literally trained hitmen and and like I watched the first episode and like within the first 30 seconds, they had me hooked because nothing caught me my attention more than this guy trying to rob this lady. And he like got like two feet away with her purse. And then you just see this chick come out with her silencer, just pew, pew, <laughs> just take him down real clean, real quiet, picks up the purse, goes on about the day. And I'm like, what? So Licorice Recoil is definitely uh, one of my favorite animes right now. And I'm pretty sure you're hopping for for Overlord. You are a hundred percent right, <laughs> guys. I'm a huge as far as anime goes. I'm, I've been a huge anime fan since I first read the manga back in 2013. Um, it got uh, it was written by Kagane Mariyama, uh, and it was first serialized online in 2010 before being acquired and picked up by Interbrain, which ultimately turned it into a light novel. Um, so there's a light novel, there's the manga, split hairs how you want. Um, amazing amazing anime it's it, it does such a good job at showing Ainz Algon who is the uh protagonist antagonist it's it's hard to say because the, the thing is is he does some fucked up things in this show yeah he does but equally 
this is the part I think they do a good job of. They show that they ex- they show him expressing that struggle inside, especially in season four. Now, I'm, these aren't spoilers, but he expresses frustration with wanting to create a utopia that's peaceful versus what his guardians are wanting, which is to simply rule the world. Um, I highly recommend this. Um, it's your it's it kind of you know it's it's, it's the typical. Uh, Isekai kind of dropped into another world uh, from the world you were in type of situation. Um, and anytime I hear that, I'm like, oh, here we go again. But then we have shows like that and, you know, reincarnated by slime and that go about it in such a different drastic way uh, that they're really good. But I highly recommend Overlord. Um, they don't deviate too much from the mangas. And uh, I say that because a lot of mangas do. They, they deviate. Uh, at least a little bit from the mangas or the animes de- deviate from the mangas. Uh, but I will say that the amount of time it takes them to come out with a show or a new, or a new season um, time well spent because uh, so far season four, two, two episodes in, it's looking great. Uh, I think my favorite season is definitely um, season three, just because of how dark it gets. So yeah. when you're watching season one <clears throat> and two and you're thinking, can it get darker than this? Cause it'll be, You'll be watching this show and you're, you're like, okay, this is fucked up or this is cool or that's lighthearted. And then all of a sudden some fucked up shit happens. You're like, okay, I didn't know he was going to do that. That's really fucking terrible. Um, wow. And it almost makes me hate some of the characters. But then the characters turn around, do things, and it kind of gives you an understanding. So I, I highly recommend this. Um, in some distant future... Uh, I know the uh, author is friends with, I don't, I don't know his name, Itachi, but he's friends with the author of Skeleton Knight from Another World mm-hmm. for the main character's arc. And he's also, same situation, uh, but it's the opposite, where uh, the main character arc is, is not wanting to take over the world. He's wanting to do good things. Um, both of them are good friends, apparently, and there's been talk of, like in the fandom, talk in the fandom of like a what if crossover type of thing. I'm, we probably won't get that, uh, but it'd be really cool to see for sure. It could be uh, a special, but like not I've, like canon. I've definitely joked like what if like the end of uh, Overlord is Ark coming over the horizon and he's like one of the original heroes and he's like, hello, I'm here. And he's <laughs> just being goofy because he's goofy as shit. Uh, but yeah, that's my recommendation for an anime, guys. Um, I'm telling you, a lot of people out there that are into animes now. Um, I, I remember watching Attack on Titan when it first came out in 2013. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I love this. I wish more people were around to talk about this. And now we have this anime community that has it feels like it's almost tripled or quadrupled, especially with online presence. So if you haven't watched Overlord, go watch it. It's a good show. I think you'll really enjoy as, as far as, as, uh, as far as just a regular like Netflix or, or, you know, streaming service show goes, I am a huge, huge umbrella Academy fan. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but before, uh, stranger things dropped its last two episodes. Cause you know, that was, the, there was that pause with the yeah. last two episodes. Umbrella Academy actually usurped, uh, Stranger Things with the most views had the second most views next to uh shit the Squid Games because the Squid Games is still like number one, uh but I just it bums me out because I don't see the Umbrella Academy being talked about the way Stranger Things gets talked about, yet they're literally on equal playing fields as far as as far as uh, popularity and viewership goes, but um basically it's uh if you guys haven't seen the Umbrella Academy on Netflix. It is a show that was created by Gerard Way, uh, author, which if you don't know, this is the lead vocalist of My Chemical Romance. And he loves comics. He is very nerdy. And back in the early 2000s, he started writing um, these comic books. Um, And they ended up getting picked up by the studios. Netflix ended up picking it up. And now it's a show. It does deviate uh, quite a bit from like it takes some of the source material it's definitely there because I, I only say this because I've, I've read I've read the comics. Uh, they're by Dark Dark Horse, by the way. Um, and he he has made no intention of stopping. He wants to continue. Um, but there are about a group of seven individuals that were adopted by a a father that 
is very strict, very hard on them, shows them no love. And they basically grow up traumatized and fucked up and dysfunctional. It's absolutely hilarious. The dialogue. It's one of the main reasons I love this show is the dialogue between the siblings, uh, specifically uh, Klaus and Diego. Those two and their dialogue is it's just so damn funny. And from season one all the way to the end of season two, you see a level of growth in everyone. No character is left out of growth. They all grow, which I think is so rare. You just don't watch shows these days where everybody gets actual growth as a as a as a character. Um, and then going into season three, season three, I didn't think it was going to be as good. You, you know, you have low expectations every time there's a sequel or, or a new season. And now season three is by far my favorite season. So again, if you guys haven't seen the Umbrella Academy or Overlord, I highly recommend them. You know, when you mention sequels and and such, the the higher they get, the less your expectations, because, you know, history has shown like after three movies, it's like, Ugh. it's funny how for movies it's worse the more they do with Jurassic maybe <clears throat> with maybe that occasional bump where you're like, OK, that was pretty good. But with TV shows, it's usually the opposite. Where like they get better the more time they're allowed mm -hmm. to do it, and you know they 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 grow and become better you, over time. You, you know, I, I I when I was a kid, I read Jurassic Park and The Lost World. I read them both. The movies were great. Did we really need six fucking Jurassic Park movies? Is it six now? It's six now. It's the original because it was Jurassic Park three. That was a, it bombed horribly. It shouldn't have existed. Um, and then there was the three that just got made. The, the three Jurassic Worlds. Yeah. Made. And wasn't this last one like an abomination too? Yeah. Like. Oh my God. Like I liked. Don't get me wrong. I liked Jurassic World because it looked like it wanted to have its own identity, which I did not let it i didn't con include it with jurassic park i said okay i'm gonna look at this like it's its own movie and when i looked at it as its own side story that just tied in to jurassic park i was able to enjoy jurassic world but after that i was like the second one was pretty damn bad people uh my stamp of approval or is is uh, are the shows we discussed here the boys umbrella academy all that um stamp of disapproval any jurassic park after the lost world jurassic park 3 and all the jurassic park worlds fuck those movies they suck they were so bad dude i wasn't even trying to be a hater i went in there happy like here we go more jurassic park nope it was bad well <laughs> I, i'm gonna i'm gonna give like a half seal of approval i'm gonna like rip my seal in half and give it a half one on world mainly because <laughs> I skipped three. I own it. Never watched it. Like everyone else ruined it for me. They were like, it's so bad. And here's the thing. I will usually give any movie a chance, uh, regardless of like review bombs and stuff, because I always go in watching a movie with a clean slate. I don't go in with any expectation, which helps me enjoy a lot of movies, which if anyone wants a movie recommendation, and I found the name of the, the anime. Uh, it's Mirko Chan. If anyone wants like a comedy horror that has a little bit of a, a emotional touch to it, uh, it that's another anime that I, I was recently watching. It's actually pretty good. It's basically a girl who can see ghosts, but she pretends that she can't see them. So they'll pop up and be like, hey, can you see me? And she's like trying her best to ignore them. And it just causes some very humorous interactions and it's a really 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 good show I've, i'm kind of like hooked on it right now i'm probably gonna watch it after the podcast um but if you guys want a horror uh itch scratch and you're like there hasn't been any good horrors lately um look up the netflix one uh netflix horror inscription i actually watched that and it was pretty good um not for the faint of heart that is for sure um, not for the faint heart. You will leave that. You will leave watching that movie feeling like you took part in a ritual without 
knowing you were taking part in a ritual. <laughs> I left that movie and, and it takes a lot to start on me. Like I can watch horror by myself. Doesn't matter the time of day. I'll watch horror movies any time of the day by myself. I actually left watching, left my room watching Inscription feeling a little bit uneasy. It has been a long time since a movie has done that to me. Um, so if you're looking for a good horror film, Netflix Inscription um, is a really, really, really good one. Um, just don't watch it before you're going to go to sleep. If you're going to watch it before you go to sleep, you got to watch something happy. Like f- to make up for it, you got to watch like four episodes of something funny afterwards. <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it's really, really good. Um, but yeah, those are our recommendations. Uh, what, what shows are you guys watching? Like any animes you guys are watching, any movies you've seen, any movies coming out that you might be interested in? Let us know. Hit us up in the comments. Um, like I said, we're always looking for su- suggestions. I can't talk. We're in our seats. Contagious. I get just a, a suggestion. Yep. <laughs> but um, yeah, let us know. We would love to hear from you guys about uh, any any uh, shows and, and movies that you guys are interested in. And also, do not forget, if you are not have not already, and you've gotten this far in the show, hit that subscribe button. That way you will know every time a new episode of the GZ Chop Chop podcast comes out. I am sure you would hate for me to be sitting in your closet to spring out later at the most inconvenient of time and be like, hey, did you hit that subscribe button? And I got to slam the headphones on your head. And you know how terrified I'd be if I just watched the inscription and I'm like getting ready for bed, but I didn't hit the subscribe button and you fucking pop out of my closet. I'm going to do some- it. I- I'd call the cops. So, What are you doing here? <laughs> But all you had to do was hit the subscribe button. That was it. And I would I would just go back and this threatening the fan base. <laughs> hey, hey, hit that subscribe button. You won't regret it. I promise. And also, if you want to check out our other two podcasts, visit our website, osn-media.com. You can catch all of our podcasts in one nifty little place. We're constantly updating the website. So if you just want to be in the know, that is the place to do it. And don't forget to visit our store the GZ shop.com constantly updating our merchandise with new themes, uh, apparel accessories. So if you see a theme you like grab it before it's gone, because we're constantly rotating themes. Once it's gone, it's gone. And uh, be on the lookout for our NFT trading cards. I know I was talking about NFTs earlier and how like everyone doesn't know about NFTs and here we are. We got NFT trading cards coming to you soon. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to be releasing some uh, collectible NFT trading cards in the near future. So be on the lookout for that as well. And if you guys really, really want to support us, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash OSN media. Get yourself some nice perks like being able to tune into the show as it's being recorded, um, calling in, getting these episodes early and and some exclusive merch that will not be in the store, but is exclusive for our Patreons only. So make sure to check that out as well. Anyway, thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in this week. You have been amazing. Stay safe out there and we will catch all of you amazing people in the next episode. Later, everybody. <laughs>